Hi there. So, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tori and I am currently 38 weeks pregnant. I decided to do a video because I am living through some interesting times. Um, normally I didn't do this for my last birth, um, but I am currently 38 weeks pregnant and planning for a home birth in the middle of a, a pandemic, actually. <laughs> So it is the COVID-19 pandemic, apparently, of the world. Um, it's probably going to go down in history at some point because it's pretty, getting pretty crazy around here. <laughs> so um, quick little summary uh, update on the world right now. Um, what's going on is many other countries are currently in um, a full lockdown like Italy. Uh, they have curfews and... Um, they can't go out except for like non-essentials like purchasing food and stuff. Um, currently, the United States is under a state of emergency from the president. In California, where I'm located, other cities and counties like San Francisco and Palm Springs are actually under um, a shelter-in-place order. So all non-essential businesses are ordered to be closing. They're shutting down around LA and Orange County, where I'm currently located. We're acting on social distancing, which means you got to keep six feet apart from other people to help try to prevent the spread of this virus. <laughs> All restaurants and bars are now, they are only allowed to be offering uh, takeout or delivery options. There's orders in place limiting the amount of people that can take up a space at one time. So no gatherings larger than I think even more than 10 people at this point. Um, every day it's constantly changing. So they're um, cracking down even more and more. I think we're very close to being behind um, following suit with like kind of Italy to some extent. I think we will eventually end up on a lockdown I and mean, it's gonna get a little bit more intense before it gets better here. So it'll be interesting to see what the world looks like when my body goes into labor. So we'll see how that goes. So currently uh, toilet paper, paper towels, uh, hand sanitizer and hand soap are flying off the shelves. They're barely able to restock or are limiting their hours to um, uh, allow for their <laughs> employees to have a chance to restock the shelves. There's lines outside the stores before they even open and people running in like mad people to um, stock up on what limited supply they're allowing them to even get of these products. I luckily enough decided to buy my paper towels from Costco um, in advance for my birth so I, <laughs> I have a whole whopping two rolls of paper towels to contribute to my birth. Um, we're running low for our house supply <laughs> currently, but um, I'm not out panic buying for them um, like all these people are. It is pretty surreal to go into grocery stores and actually experience that apocalyptic feel of um, empty store shelves because now people are starting to stock up on food um, even though they keep encouraging us not to do that, <laughs> but I can't blame anybody for wanting to be prepared, I guess. Luckily, we have quite a bit of reserves. In farmer's markets, which I typically like to shop at and um, is actually like part of our business, um, they're fighting to stay alive, you know, to keep local produce going for um, our communities and get fresh food to people and help build their immune systems and stuff. So it's quite an interesting time to be alive and be deciding to have a baby. <laughs> I had been planning a home birth regardless of the circumstances. I definitely wouldn't want to find myself having um, to try to birth a baby in a hospital during these times. Um, I think that they're having a lot of crackdowns on the amount of people that they're going to allow um, in hospital rooms with um, people, even if you're delivering babies. So that would kind of suck to not be able to have my birth team that I wanted around. Not that I wanted to be in a hospital in general. I don't want to end up there at all. So, um, but right now is my time to encourage everybody to try to switch to a home birth um, because you don't want to be caught around all the coronavirus going on right now, probably. Just just thought. <laughs> Midwives should put out billboards for that. Regardless of being in a pandemic, um, there are things that I already had in place that are just normal and typical for birthing a baby at home. So I actually have a hired OBGYN that comes to my home to birth with me with his birth team of a midwife and he has another assistant that works with him um, that he uh, is training currently so I'll have a birth team of three people. I actually intend to try to do most of it myself without um, a lot of assistance but let's get to it. 
So when you have a home birth and you have a midwife or doctor, whichever it is, sometimes they like to request that you purchase a specific birth kit to them that is um, supplies that they want you to have specifically um, to birth a baby in their care. So I went to a website called Simply Birth where my doctor has his request put in for us to purchase a kit and it comes in a little nifty bag like this, Simply Birth, it's really cute. And it was like loaded full of stuff. It's not full right now because I have stuff spread out all over, kind of, so I can go over it with you guys um, of all my supplies. So I plan to do a home water birth. So on top of my normal supplies, I did um, ask him to bring a birth tub. So he supplies me with the birth tub. I buy a liner, a clean liner for my birth. Um, it's called a birth pool in a box is the one that he has, so I bought the liner for that, and this one's unique to myself, clean, brand new, everything. Um, you also get a hose, and in here is a shower, or um, you'll get like a shower sink adapter to be able to connect the hose to be able to fill up your tub. Um, I did have the tub last time, because this is my second home birth. I didn't end up delivering in the tub, but I intend to try again this time. This is actually the room that I plan to birth in. So the tub is actually gonna go exactly positioned where um, my camera is right now. It is pretty bright. I do plan to to pin up some sheets and stuff to make it a little bit more ambiance in here for me. Um, a little bit more dark, dim, relaxing environment. I do put up uh, fake candles around. I create my own little zen space. So on top of my normal birth kit stuff, I do put up those candles, I get out my oil diffuser, I have made a bunch of birth affirmations that I put up all over the walls, I put them in here, I put them in my hallway, I put them in the bathroom, wherever I feel like I might labor. Um, they're just kind of like motivational quotes and things to kind of keep me motivated and going strong and in the right mindset during my birth. Um, inside the birth kit comes a bunch of pads. So you're gonna get a ton of pads, maternity length pads. Um, these are organic cotton pads. You get a lot of pads. I even have more than this. I've got some in my bathroom already, um, kind of throughout the house, because you don't know how long you're gonna be bleeding for. I do also make a postpartum padsicles to help with soothing um, the soreness and swelling that kind of occurs downstairs um, after birth postpartum. So I take the pad, you lay it out, and I usually use witch hazel, lavender oil, and aloe vera to coat that. Um, I don't have it right now because it's in the fridge, but I did actually have to buy <laughs> a whole fresh aloe leaf because right now I can't find any aloe gel. I'm guessing people are stocking up on that to make their own hand sanitizer since it's sold out of the stores right now, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but fresh aloe works too. So in the birth kit also, you're gonna get a ton of um, under pads, which are like those puppy pads that you lay out. So I'm guessing these are gonna be used for things like um, cervical checks um, to check my dilation, which I um, don't plan to have a ton of. I, last time I think I had a total of three or four in my home birth, which was even probably more than um, I'm looking to have this time. My labor was really long last time. It was like 34 hours, so I mean, it was over that, that much time, but hopefully this one will be, will be less, but um, I do hope to get less checks because sometimes the more cervical dil dilation checks you get, the more discouraging it is to the mama in labor because you know, you've been in labor for this long, the contractions are so intense, and you haven't made any progress. And that can be really frustrating mentally. Um, luckily, I kind of handled it okay, but I'm just gonna try to, you know, limit those. You're also gonna get a lot of gloves. So I got a whole box of latex gloves. Um, they're like exam gloves. I'm guessing maybe they just changed these out a lot, like protocol or something, because otherwise I don't know why I need a whole box, but you know, I'm sure they'll come in handy for something else. They also have a ton of these surgical gloves. I'm guessing he'll have to use these maybe when he's doing like the suturing and stuff like that, but there are quite a few <laughs> of those too, so I'm not sure how many gloves you really need but there are um a bunch of vinyl rolls of plastic so my doctor and midwife like um people to use these um this is some plastic that you'd probably lay down 
um, where you plan to labor in around the around the tub to um, prevent ruining your carpet so when you're coming in and out of the tub also you can he recommended laying it down on my bed uh, i already knew this but so i just purchased ahead of time instead of using these i just buy the uh, vinyl mattress cover so basically you what you're supposed to do is you you take off all your linens from your bed you put your clean sheets on you put your waterproof cover on top or you lay out the plastic and then you put some dirty not, not dirty but uh, sheets you don't mind being soiled on top so when you have the berth and stuff it's really easy to just remove those sheets toss them in the trash or wash them or whatever you want to do and then take off the plastic liner and then you have clean sheets underneath so you can um, have a nice bed to be in after you have the baby. But this is actually my guest room. I still plan to do it just in case I have I have the baby on the bed like I did last time or my water breaks on it or whatever, but just to maintain just the bed itself so I don't ruin it in any way. I really loved last time being able to birth in my guest room. And then once I was done and uh, stitched up and everything was good to go, I was able to just leave and go to my bed and go to sleep, you know, while they did all their cleaning up and moving around. I didn't have to deal with any of that. So it was really cool to just be completely done and removed from the situation and just be able to relax and bond with my baby and get some rest because I was really tired after my last labor. In this bag, I've got tons of large black trash bags, small white trash bags, um, Ziploc bags, paper on um, paper bags. Um, there's some emesis bags. Um, I don't know exactly what these are for, but they might be like little trash bags or maybe for throw up or something. Uh, uh, we've got tons of diapers, depend style, which you do um, wear immediately postpartum and will come in handy. You've got your sexy little mesh panties, two pairs, you know, to keep it nice and light while you're wearing your diaper. <laughs> Uh, lots of gauze pads, tons of those. Uh, also in this bag, I do have my quick catch net for my birth tub, <laughs> just in case when you're pushing a lot of women in labor, um, when they're pushing, you do tend to poo sometimes. I think I did last time, but they were so quick about scooping it up or cleaning it up or whatever <laughs> happened that I didn't even notice. So that's really nice. You know, didn't, I mean, it was probably minimal, but lots of lubricating jelly, lots of lubricating jelly, all the umbilical cord care stuff. So we've got um, the umbilical cord clamps. We have some uh, cord care um, golden seal root powder that they applied to the umbilical cord to help healing. Um, I don't think I used it last time, but it came in my kit this time. So maybe worth a shot. Um, this is a um, cord ring, umbilical cord ring. Also, um, they have a infant heel warmer. Um, I'm assuming for when they want to do the heel prick for um, the newborn screening testing stuff. I also have some alcohol prep pads. This is, I believe, the suture for if I tear. Um, I know that he brings, like, obviously the equipment to do suturing, but I think this is the actual suture itself that is absorbable. It also came with all these little electrolyte drink things with the plastic straws. Um, I don't intend to use these because I don't really drink all this stuff <laughs> anyways. It's just sugar and citric acid and artificial colors and flavors and stuff and it's not really my thing so um, I plan to just hydrate um, during my birth. The bright thing about having a home birth is you get to eat and drink whatever you want. Um, so I'm gonna have coconut water, ginger soda, fresh orange juice. I can fresh squeeze some oranges um, ahead of time, put it in a mason jar, pop it in the fridge. Super stoked about that. Also what comes in the kit is a postpartum peri bottle so my last birth they didn't i don't believe frida baby had this whole postpartum awesome products that they have now which is super helpful to moms that don't know to make like the padsicles and stuff like that but they've actually come out with a new design for a peri bottle which is like a perineum like spray bottle 
So postpartum, you don't really want to wipe down there. It's really swollen and it hurts. So um, a lot of times I just give it a little spritz. The bottle I had before was angled like directly up. They came out with a new one and it's like an angle. So you just hold it down and you spray it up there and it gives it a nice fresh rinse. Um, so basically what I do for my peri bottle is I don't just do water, but they have like a postpartum sits bath tea. Um, so when I'm in labor, I usually will boil this tea just like during my early stage of labor um, and kind of get this ready to go for my peri bottle so that um, in the bathroom after I go, I have it already ready to go inside here and I can freshen things up down there. So th that came in my birth kit as well, but I know this brand has a lot of awesome products for moms now. So it's got lots of already made padsicle type things and um, but I just feel like I made them myself last time and it was so easy just to pop in the freezer and have ready to go, um, that I just planned to do it myself again. Kit, you get a baby foot printer, so this, um, it's like a little baby feet print and my fingerprint goes in here. Other extras that I got that didn't come in the kit um, that I got for my labor and for my birth just like out of experience and um, just for my own comfort are I'm going to have my oil diffuser and in here I've got all my favorite oils so I'm planning to use um, peace and calming joy and lavender to diffuse to create my um, relaxing environment and also peppermint oil to for nausea because I did tend to get a little bit nauseous last um, labor. So I can get a cold rag, apply the peppermint oil, put it on the back of my neck, breathe it in, and that'll help with my nausea. Um, lemon oil is all supposed to help with um, energy levels, you know, so if I just do a little like rejuvenation that way. Also in my handy dandy little diaper caddy right here, I've got my olive oil and vitamin E oil. So these can be used um, for, on my perineum when I'm crowning to help prevent tearing. Um, I'm also using these right now for sometimes like perineum massages every once in a while to help get that area already moistened up to help prevent tearing because I did tear last time. So inside here, I've also got my newborn diapers right away. I've got a couple receiving blankets they ask you to have. I've got my nursing bra I plan to labor in and I also have a bunch of extras just ready to go for if this gets wet and whatever and I'm not comfortable and I want to change out of it into something new right away after I have the baby. I've got lots that are easy to access my boobs. Everything's good to go. Um, I have a VIX thermometer. These are great. I loved it from with my last baby. It reads in like eight seconds and it can do rectal, oral, or underarm. So the underarm, it's like you don't have very much time with these kids. They don't sit still. So <laughs> it's good to get them out of there. Um, nursing pads. I got the overnight extra big ones. These are the bamboo bees reusable. Um, when my milk came in, I was just like a leaky faucet, like it never ended. So these will hopefully come in handy. I didn't even end up wearing a bra forever. I just had a towel wrapped around me the last time because it was just crazy. Got little baby booties, little mittens for the, her hands um, so she doesn't scratch. But I think the first outfit I'm going to put her in has those little things to put over her hands anyways, but just in case. Um, I've got some baby wipes, burp cloths, all kinds of goodies in here. Extra things that I'm going to have that I don't have right now with me is just I have a big Tupperware bowl that um, will be for if I happen to throw up, but hopefully not. Or also um, afterwards to place my placenta into um, because last time and this time I'm going to take my placenta, cut it up, and freeze it into ice cube trays because <laughs> um, they make placenta smoothies with it. Um, I didn't suffer from any postpartum de depression or any um, problems like that and I had read that doing that helps with that so because it happened to work whether or not it actually did or didn't um, have anything to do with the placenta smoothies um, I'm just going to kind of do the same thing I did last time and that was really easy to do I didn't have to get the encapsulation um, and it's free to do it doesn't bother me at all like they're small little ice cubes and it's with a whole bunch of fruit and it's just me drinking it and you don't notice at all so uh, maybe I'm just weird I don't know but oh uh, what also came in my kit which was not extras they came in my kit but I don't think all people might do it but it's just like homeopathics um so arnica which is supposed to help with like muscle soreness there is phylotica which is good for like um inflammation and stuff like that so I never had to use these last time but they're on deck just in case also after ease for pregnancy is supposed to help with cramping that you get like when you're um 
everything's kind of shrinking back up afterwards, I guess in your second um, or third burrs, like it always can be a little bit crampy than others, other first births. So that might come in handy. I've got my oral vitamin K that I intend to do this time around because um, I don't plan to do the injection. This didn't come in my kit, but I bought extra is my um, lip balm. So I can apply this during my labor if I feel like I'm getting chapped or parched or other things. Um, I will have to have a flashlight on deck. I'm going to have a mirror this time. Um, last time I did not use a mirror to see my progress and this time around I think I might have the mirror on hand just to be able to get a good visualiza visualization and bring myself back to like reality of what's going on. Um, I also have a heating pad that straps to my back just in case for um, extra comfort levels. Um, my partner has a TENS machine. I did not use any of these things in my last birth. I just kind of like muscled through it because I did not have a big... I didn't tell anybody else my plan and once I was in labor it just kind of all went out the window and I just kind of like rolled with it. Um, but I would like to have some more comfort this time which would be cool if it doesn't um, inhibit any medical interference or whatever. So I've been reading a lot about TENS machines in labor and how they're super helpful and you can um, crank it on when you're in the middle of a contraction and it's supposed to be awesome. So I may end up using that and applying that in my labor this time. Um, my partner knows how to use it and I've got a whole printout on how to use that in labor. So that's pretty cool. Um, so two weeks before your due date, which I'm 38 weeks now, so I just recently had done. Um, you're supposed to have your house totally cleaned, um, keep up on your laundry, um, have all your baby clothes washed and organized, everything kind of ready to go. So on top of all of this, my OB and mid midwife do bring their own supply of tools, like they bring a Doppler to be able to listen to the baby's heartbeat. They'll have a steth stethoscope, blood pressure cuff to be able to tell my blood pressure while I'm in labor with no cords. Um, they bring a catheter if necessary, which I did not need one last time. I don't really know why I would need one. Um, they just remind me, like I'm just supposed to be reminded by my birth team to go every, at least every hour. To um, They'll bring, you know, IV needles, tubing if that's necessary for any reason instruments for suturing like I said earlier um they bring oxygen and training for newborn resuscitation baby scale medicines for the baby if desired suctioning devices for the baby if that's needed um because I have an OB and not just midwives I think he does bring um a vacuum and forceps just in case I don't intend to use those and I've made it very clear that I hope he doesn't have to but you never know I guess but at least he has those available so that I don't have to be transported to a hospital to get access to those if I need it, but I'm really hoping that it doesn't happen. A sump pump to suck out the birth water from the tub to pack it all back up after the birth. When you have a home birth, depending on your midwife, like some midwives provide more um, postpartum and newborn care after the labor. Um, my OB this time and his midwife only provide me with, um, I think one to two newborn visits, um, a couple, two to three days after birth to check on me and the baby and they can schedule more if necessary. But they do um, ask that you, you know, you see a pediatrician within three to four days of the birth anyway. So anyway, I am getting very excited. Just trying to get my mind right because um, having a home birth is all about your mentality really and just feeling safe and calm. And that's why I choose to have my babies at home is because this is where I feel the most comfortable. This is my space, my zen, and I'm allowed to just um, move around and labor and go right to bed with my baby and my family after. And my daughter gets to be a part of it. So, and that's gonna be a really cool experience. I've already been showing her home birth videos. She's always super stoked to see them and she gets really excited when the baby finally comes and she can't wait for her little sister to get here. So I'm excited for my daughter to be a part of my birth in whatever way that ends up looking because I don't know how active I'll want her to be in the middle of it or how much she'll be involved because she's going to get bored. So I do have a person designated just for her during my labor. So my partner can be on me and we don't have to worry about her. She'll be covered and somebody else is designated just for her to keep her entertained, bring her in and out as she pleases. But I know she likes to be a part of everything, so I'll see how that goes. <laughs> so just getting my mind right because no matter how much little stress you try to cause your brain and your body with all this that's going on in the world right now with this pandemic and with our work instability and just not really knowing what the world's gonna look like within the next two weeks depending on whenever this baby decides to come, 
um, we could be on full lockdown, <laughs> you know, and my doctor has to travel almost an hour and a half to get to my home from where he's located. So that's another uh, variable. So, and so I'm like hoping this baby will decide to come uh, regardless of all this stuff because I'm just trying to stay, stay centered, you know, and I've been practicing my hypnobirthing and listening to those relaxation podcasts and stuff. So I'll let you guys know how it goes. <laughs> the end. <laughs>